I've got something absolutely bonkers for you today. We're going to test a 4570 430 grain plus P from HSM. The 4570 is a beast of a cartridge. It chucks huge metal hauling ass like a madman. This is a cartridge from the frontier days of the American West when men were men and women, well, they were men too. 4570 is so named because it fires a bullet that's 45 one hundredths of an inch from a case containing 70 grains of black powder. To add a little perspective, the 45 Colt originally used 28 grains of black powder. To say that 4570 was already an impressively powerful cartridge back then is an understatement. But this load is a modern load using smokeless powder and designed for guns made with modern metallurgical techniques. Being a plus P, this load is on the bleeding edge of what's even safely possible for 4570. And that's saying an awful lot. The test gun is a Marlin Model 1895 Trapper. Let's get out to the range and see what happens. Seventeen twenty five. Cool. Wow. Okay, that was amazing. It really hurt to shoot that. The average velocity was about 1,700 feet per second, which is screaming fast for a chunk of lead this big. Of course, that bullet honey badgered its way completely through both blocks. I honestly didn't expect to be able to catch this bullet, being a ginormous chungus of a piece of metal jamming along at a speed more commonly associated with 30 carbine, you don't have to be a rocket surgeon to predict it will drive a pain train right through any mortal flesh that crosses its path. But the question hanging in the air is, what's it good for? I mean, what's it not good for? On the terminal side of things, it isn't fancy or pretty. It's just a fat chunk of lead moving fast. But that means it will put a hole all the way through most things, and that's good enough to kill most mortal things good and dead. Technically speaking, the velocity is below the 2,000 foot per second threshold that the patron saint of terminal ballistics, Dr. Fackler, proposed was the point where temporary stretch cavity tends to exceed the elastic limit of tissue and begin the ripping and the tearing, the ripping and the tearing. But I suspect there's more than just velocity at work there. I think it's possible that heavy bullets with lots of frontal area can do a similar thing at slower speeds. And the high speed video seems to support that. But take my speculation with a grain of salt because I am not an expert. I'll tell you one thing, if I had to take on the Mind Flayer, I'd probably choose this, or a 240 Bravo. If you want to put a really wide hole a few feet into any critter since the Pleistocene age, and you don't care about recoil, this would probably get her done. But I'm not much of a big game hunter. What do you guys think? What's the biggest animal that you know of that's been taken with the 4570? I hope you found this video informative or at the very least entertaining. If you think I've earned it, please help support our channel by liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. That's not just some lame crap that YouTubers say at the end of videos. 
All those actions are forms of engagement that drive the decisions made by the algorithm. And because subscribing doesn't really mean anything anymore, please make sure to click that little bell icon so you can actually get a notification when we post a new video. If you want to find out how to rent a Phantom V642 or other high-speed camera just like the one that I used to capture this video, contact AIMED Research. Their contact info is in the description. Keep your powder dry.